this is Jessica with Dining Traveler and welcome to the Dining Traveler cooking series where we learn how to cook dishes from our favorite destinations and today we're doing something a little bit different. We're at Modena in downtown Washington DC with one of my friends and super talented chef John Melfi and he's going to teach us how to plate like a pro. And this is really exciting because we finally can have people over and I'm ready to throw some crazy dinner parties. So what are you going to teach us today? Well, we're going to start with uh, a few little tips and, and things that you can do to kind of build a repertoire at home. So we have beautiful plate selection. We have things with contour and depth, different shadings, um, different sizes. You need the right tool for the right job. We also have here some beautiful spoons and spatulas, little sauce spoons, some fun little scrapers that you can do designs on your plate. All this stuff is on Amazon. We have cute little Parisienne scoops that we make our little balls of different squash and zucchini and cucumbers. Ring molds are always great, but these are just a few of some of the tools that we use here in the restaurant. Awesome, so let's get started. All right. So what we're going to do is we have several forms of purees, different textures, different um, viscosities and colors. So what we're going to do is show you just a few different poles, swooshes, scoops, quenelles that you can use to bedazzle your guests. Bottles, okay? So what we like to do is using two hands, okay, holding it away from the plate slightly to get that depth and height, another thing that we're looking for. Okay, you can do poles, you can do swooshes. What we have here is a few different um, purees, different textures. We have basically guacamole here um, in a squeeze bottle so it's nice and smooth. We have also a charred eggplant puree that we actually dye using squid ink. You can do a nice pull like that and also you can do a beautiful half quenelle as we call it in the kitchen. Easy. Lastly, what do we have here? We have our nice spatula. Okay, super easy. Get a nice puree. We have a nice spring pea um, here from our local farms. What I like to do is you can put this down, you can pull half, you can use the side of the plate. Um, another good one is to just kind of um, use the whole rim of the plate. I've done that several times as well. Um, and don't be afraid you know, to think outside the box, okay? And are used to garnish cakes. But if you give it a nice swirl, kind of pull your puree towards you in one line, you'll get this beautiful pinwheel effect, super easy, and you'll wow your guests. I have some sauce. Now this is a demi, this is a veal-based jus, and we have here a sauce spoon. We don't use it all the time during the kitchen, but at home it really helps our, you know, at-home users. So it helps you control the pour, okay? So you can really put it exactly where you want. You can also drizzle a lot easier, a lot more control, okay? So this last one's gonna take a little bit of practice. This is the one that scares everybody, especially at home. We have our infamous quenelle. I also have some lovely little cute quenelle spoons that you can also buy. They don't necessarily make it easier. It's all about the technique, and I'll tell you, it just takes practice and practice. But what you will need is a nice, uh, a certain texture, not too firm, not too soft. Whipped cream is perfect to start with. It's a really good beginner, um, texture. So now you definitely have to have hot water no matter what you're quenelling, okay? So you're going to get your spoon a little wet, a little hot, and it's all in the technique, okay? So you're going to make these little football shaped. You make it look so easy. <laughs> I try. I've practiced for years and years and years, I can tell you that. And I didn't always make it look so easy, I can promise you. Technique is kind of push away and come to you. There's also another technique to where you roll it on the side. Depends on how thick your, you know, what your quenelling is. Gelato, ice cream, sorbet. Um, here we have a delicate whipped cream. So I kind of go away from me and I use the side of the container to make a nice little football. The last way to do a quenelle would be to use two spoons and kind of make a triangle type of quenelle using two spoons, but you would use them the same size and you would kind of do a motion like this. That's used more for, say, like a relish or a jam or a jelly, something like a chutney. But this one, you just kind of do your little roll on the side and there you go. I do make it look easy, but again, you really have to practice for a while. Practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. So now you are going to show us how to plate one of your signature dishes, which is the salmon raviolo. 
Can you tell us a little bit of, about the dish? So I guess the thought process behind it was playfulness and how can we do a spin on a classic ravioli or raviolo in this case um, in an Italian restaurant. So we use sockeye salmon, beautiful wild salmon coming in during this time of the year. We citrus cure it with spruce tips, lemon, lime, and orange. And then we freeze it so we can slice it paper thin. And after we slice it, we build ourselves a raviolo. And inside we do uh, use mascarpone cheese that we whip um, uh, with limoncello, house-made limoncello, um, and some more citrus zest and espalette pepper, so it has a nice kick to it. Um, and then we use this kind of as our canvas to place all these wonderful flowers, little micros that we're getting here locally from Lancaster Co-op and a great, one of the great farmers that we work with. So first what we're going to do is we use some beautiful trout roe. Um, you could also use salmon roe as well. Okay. I put a little dollop of these on top. They're going to add a salinity, a little crunch, um, a nice a highlight to the dish. So now we have local cucumbers in season. So we use our Parisian scoop and that's how we got these little guys. We're gonna put a few radishes, a little French breakfast radish. You can use cherry bell, you can use Easter egg. So we put a few of these guys around, okay. Pickled Fresnos. So the idea of the dish is to eat your way through it and all these different textures, colors, um, are really gonna highlight the salmon and that's our canvas so to speak. So we're going to use things from micro basil for flavor. Okay, a couple, two, three of those. We have some beautiful pea tendrils here. Okay, pea tendrils are obviously in season as we speak. Um, so we use a few of those guys. And again, we're trying to go for height here too. So get a little bit of height. Um, that's one of our things, color, contrast, um, and texture are kind of the things we're going to go for. So we have red vein sorrel. This is going to be very citrusy, okay? Very sharp in flavor, but then you have the creamy cheese. Um, nasturtium is going to be very peppery. So that's one of my favorites. We use the blossoms and the greens. Then we have, we make a little citrus blend here with like little lemongrass shoots, and little chervil, little parsley and tarragon, which is always beautiful. And then my favorite part, Johnny Jump Ups, Violets, little pansies and snapdragons. You can use all of these. So as you see, we're kind of building and building flavors and different textures all the way around the dish. So lastly, we're doing a squid ink twill. It's actually a lace made with squid ink flour and water that we actually cook in a saute pan till it separates. And then the flour actually crisps into a cracker. So we do odd numbers here as well. Um, always odd is a little bit more appealing. So I gave you a few examples here, but you know, have fun, first of all. Um, so why don't you try a real simple, easy little pull. You're gonna put just a little dollop down and then you're gonna swipe the palette knife through you can try that one. So Tap, pull. Tap, pull. There it is. Okay. Hey, look at that. Now we're going to try our little half quenelle move here. And we're going to use these beautiful little rubber kind of uh, scrapers, if you would. And we'll get a really cool effect. Side of the spoon. Yep. And then just leave it. Just dollop. Nice. That's it. And now you use your rubber scraper and we'll see what we get. Look at that. Very nice. can even do more. You can go around. You can go straight lines. You can do multiple. It seems like it just takes a little bit to make things look really good. Right. And it's not really as hard as you would think, mm -hmm. you know. I think um, when you go out to dine, you know, you see everything as a c composed plate, mm -hmm. you know. And it can look complicated, it can look overwhelming, but if you break it down and um, kind of go over our tips that we gave of using colors and textures and contrast, a little height, mm -hmm. um, I think you're, you're off to a great start. And then just have fun. Well, thank you, John, again. Um, thank you. you can find John at Modena at downtown Washington, D.C. Make sure you check him out. I love coming here for lunch all the time. And She is know, a regular. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm going to go and eat. So thank you guys so much for tuning in, and please let us know any questions or feedback you have in the comments. Bye. Thank you. Ciao, ciao.